Hello everybody and welcome to another Brother Crypt video. Um, today I'm starting one of my first series called the Dissecting Series. Basically um, I really wanted to cover the majority of some of the top coins and a lot of coins listed on CoinMarketCap um, and I really wanted to do a deep dive exploration into some of the coins. Um, I really wanted to find out some of the things like price history, technology, you know, what's the value behind the coins, the project, what's the vision, what's the potential, and then really give an overall sort of analysis of that coin. Now, the first coin in the series is going to be Bitcoin. Um, in the process of doing my research, I did come across quite a lot of information and I've really made an effort to streamline it and give it to you in a consistent manner, which will be enable you to really have a sort of fundamental understanding of each of some of the top coins and some of the tokens on, you know, coin market cap. Um, before we get into the Bitcoin dissecting series, let's just have a look at coin market cap. Now, the time um, currently at recording is, you know, 8.42 in the evening, UK time. Uh, to be more specific, that's the time in London where I'm situated. Um, today is the 18th of May, um, 2018. And by looking at the markets, we can see that we have 160, excuse me, 1,629 cryptocurrencies listed on CoinMarketCap. And we have a market capitalization of 287 billion. Um, actually, just a little bit over that. And um, Bitcoin's dominance is 40% of the market. Now, over the last 24 hours, we can see that there's been a slight gain in Bitcoin's price. Um, I believe earlier today or late yesterday, Bitcoin price was around $6,741. Um, and that's the price it is right now. Um, without further ado, let's get into our uh, Bitcoin dissecting series. And I think one of the first things I would like to look at is price history. Now, um, I've really looked at the Bitcoin price history and some noticeable events were that, that um, you know, the first open source Bitcoin client was created and released on the 9th of January, 2009. Um, this is not this event is not listed here on coin market cap um, so I believe coin market cap probably started around about May uh, 2013 or perhaps that's when data for the price of Bitcoin was perhaps archived and saved but moving on the first real world transaction um, happened using Bitcoin was the purchase of two pizzas in Jacksonville in Florida where somebody called Lazio uh, spent around 10,000 BTC to be able to buy a pizza. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this story. Now, coming on to CoinMarketCap, we can see that the first time Bitcoin was listed um, was on the 4th of May. Well, right now, right here, we can see that it's actually um, on the 11th of May. But on my records, you know, my records, which were compiled earlier, it actually states it was on the 4th of May, 2013. And the listed price on CoinMarketCap was $98 per BTC. Now, the, ne the, the first time that Bitcoin increased its value by tenfold, it did a 10x, was on the 28th of November in the same year. Let me just see if I can find that very quickly. Um, yeah, 
Okay, so we've got the 28th of November on 2013 and it's actually got a price of 800 uh, US dollars roughly. Um, it's actually very funny because in the process of compiling this, um, I'm now conflicted with two sets of numbers. So when I looked at this yesterday in order to be able to prepare this research, um, the value I came across on CoinMarketCap was $1,046.40 on the 28th of November. Uh, perhaps I'm mistaken. Yes, uh, I, I must take that back. Uh, that's my mistake. So we can see on the 30th of November, um, the price is actually listed here on CoinMarketCap for $1,149.14. Okay, now um, what we can do is we can, if, if we look further on this price chart, we can quickly move over to the 12th of May. Um, let me just find it very quickly. And on the 12th of May, we can see that the price on the 12th of May 2014, ah, excuse me. Yeah, so we can see on the 12th of May 2014 that the price has been recorded as $441.28. Um, I won't keep on showing you all of these instance, instances, but let me just um, share with you some of the prices that I did make a note of. Um, I'll quickly run through them right from the beginning again, um, just so you can keep up with my train of thought. So initially listed on CoinMarketCap at $98 on the 4th of May 2013. Um, Bitcoin did the 10x and it was listed on CoinMarketCap for $1,046.40 on the 28th of November 2013. It then crashed and it went down to a price of 400 and 38 um, on the 12th of May 2014 and then it also crashed again in February um, February the 6th and the price went down to 216 dollars uh, and 92 cents now, the next time it did go back to $1,000 was on the 3rd of January, 2017. Um, and then the price up on that day was at $1,021.60. Now, for 11 months, that meant that in between those that range, um, excuse me, let me start again. So after that 2017 price of 1,020, um, for 11 months, Bitcoin was less than $1,000. And it rose to $19,475.80 on the 17th of January on the 17th of December excuse me 2017 right today we can see that the market price for Bitcoin <clears throat> has um, increased recently to about six thousand seven hundred and fifty six um, dot twenty nine cents okay all right so that's really some of the price history that I wanted to give you quickly um, about Bitcoin's price. And why I took this route was because I really wanted to show you the market cycle of the curve of how it increased, you know, how it was placed at just under $100. And then within four months later, it increased uh, to a 10x. 
and then for two years um, it didn't reach that price again um, for for quite some time you, you know because people especially new people to this space they get disillusioned they may have bought at an all-time high um, but one of the things that they failed to neglect is that this is um, a product that has a cyclical nature which is sort of in the market and then the price does go up and it does go down but moving on um, the next thing that I really wanted to cover was some of the technology now a lot of my um, insight was taken by the Bitcoin org foundation um, and I'm just going to read to you some of the um, important bits that I wanted to share Bitcoin is a consensus network that enables a new payment system and a completely and a complete digital money. <clears throat> it is the first decentralized peer-to-peer -peer payment network that is powered by its users with no central authority or middlemen. Bitcoin can also be seen as the most prominent triple entry bookkeeping system in existence. Triple entry is a simple idea uh, revolutionary to accounting. Um, a triple entry transaction is a three-party one in which Alice pays Bob and Ivan intermediates. Um, each holds the transaction making for triple copies. To make a transaction Alice signs over a payment instruction to Bob with her public key um, based signature. Ivan, the issuer, then packages the payment request into a receipt and that receipt becomes the transaction. To make a transaction, Alice signs over a payment instruction to Bob with her public key signature. Um, excuse me, I think I've double read this. Bitcoin is the first implementation of what we know today as a cryptocurrency, which has been described in 1989 on the cypherpunks mailing list suggesting the idea of a new form of currency um, a new form of money that uses a cartography to control its creation and transaction rather than a central authority the first bitcoin and proof of concept was published in 2009 in a cryptography mailing list by Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi left the project in late 2010 without re revealing uh, too much about himself. Nobody owns the Bitcoin network, much like no one owns the technology behind email. Bitcoin is controlled by Bitcoin users around the world. From a perspective, Bitcoin is nothing more than a mobile app or a computer program that provides a personal Bitcoin wallet and allows a user to send and receive Bitcoins with them. This is how Bitcoin works for most users. Behind the scenes, the Bitcoin network is sharing a public ledger called the blockchain. The ledger contains every transaction ever processed, allowing a user allowing a user's computer to verify the validity of each transaction. The authenticity of each transaction is protected by digital signatures corresponding to the, to the sending addresses, allowing all users to have full control over sending Bitcoins from their Bitcoin addresses. In addition, anyone can process transactions using the, using the computing power of specialized hardware and earn a reward in Bitcoin for this service. Which we, um, which we know as mining. Okay, so I've you know covered uh, what I wanted to share with you about the technology. Basically, we know that it was created by Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, we find out that he left the project. Now, I think the Bitcoin Foundation, um, they manage a lot of, they, they coordinate a lot of the software developments. And I hear that there are different people who who developed and have developed the Bitcoin network. You know, um, from what I hear, Vitalik Buterin also contributed to Bitcoin. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, Andreas Antonopoulos, you know, has close ties with the Bitcoin Foundation as well. 
Um, I even think, uh, uh, is it Brock Pierce? He's been also part of the Bitcoin Foundation too. So we know that developers, you know, they do come and go, but a lot of them have worked for the Bitcoin Foundation and then they go off to do other projects, which is fine. Um, and, you know, the way that um, Bitcoin, why it's popular in its technologies for things such as the triple um, entry bookkeeping system. You know, this is a, an, a revolutionary aspect that, in, that has enabled trustless peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Moving on. Okay, so where does Bitcoin get its value from? Which is a good question. Um, I'll close this. Bitcoin, Bitcoins, should I say, have value because they are useful um, as a form of money. Bitcoin has the characteristic of money, durability, portability, fungibility, scarcity, divisibility and record nizeability based on the properties of mathematics rather relying on physical properties like gold or silver or trust in central authorities like cryptocurrencies in short bitcoin is backed by mathematics what these attribute what these attributes all that is required for a form of money to hold value is trust and adoption. In the case of Bitcoin, this can be measured by its growing base of users, merchants and startups. As with all currency, Bitcoin's value comes only and directly from people willing to accept them as payment. Um, there are a number of growing businesses and individuals using Bitcoin. This includes brick and mortar businesses like restaurants, um, apartments um, and law firms, as well as popular online services such as Namecheap, Overstocked and Reddit. While Bitcoin remains a relatively new phenomenon, it's growing fast. As of today, um, the value of all existing Bitcoin exceeds 115 billion dollars with millions of dollars worth of bitcoin um it's actually billions with with millions or billions of dollars exchanged daily other notable organizations that accept um bitcoin are wikileaks um the electronic frontier foundation um, there's a site called Bitty, which hosts up to a thousand merchants. Um, and you should also know that Bitcoin is linked with M-Pesa, um, the Kenyan, you know, mobile payments platform. Um, the Chinese internet provider Baidu also accepts Bitcoin. And um, the University of Nicosia in Cyprus, I hope I pronounced that correctly, also accepts Bitcoin for its tuition fees. Um, there's a company called Zynga, um, which uses, which accepts Bitcoin for purchasing in-game assets as well. And the Las Vegas Hotel and also the Golden Gate Hotel in Las Vegas have been accepting Bitcoin since 2014, along with the computer manufacturer Dell. Um, in 2015, Barclays announced that they would accept Bitcoin with a plan to facilitate users to make charitable donations using cryptocurrency outside um, their payment system. You know, even Shopify, um, some merchants on Shopify accept Bitcoin as well. And I've heard that Tesla also accept Bitcoin as well. So whilst we're still on the principle of value, you know, what other sort of attributes or assets are there which make, um, you know, Bitcoin add value today? Well, I think one of the first things is payment freedom. Um, it is possible to send and receive Bitcoin anywhere in the world at any time. No bank holiday, no borders, no bureaucracy. Bitcoin allows its users to be in full control of their money. Um, also, choice of fees. Um, there is no fee to receive Bitcoins and many wallets let you control 
how large a fee to pay when spending. Additionally, merchant processes exist to assist merchants in processing transactions, converting Bitcoin to fiat currency and depositing funds directly into merchants' bank accounts daily. As these services are based on Bitcoin, they can be offered for much lower fees than with PayPal or credit card networks. Another point of value is that there are fewer risks for merchants. Um, Bitcoin transactions are secure, they're irreversible, and do not contain customer sensitive or personal information. This protects merchants from losses caused by fraud or fraudulent, or fraudulent chargebacks. Merchants can easily expand um, to new markets where either credit cards are not available or fraud rates are unacceptably high. The net result may, um, excuse me, the net results are lower fees, larger markets and fewer administrative costs. Another point is uh, security and control. Um, Bitcoin users are in full control of their transactions. It is impossible for merchants to force unwanted or unnoticed ch charges as can happen with other payments. Uh, Bitcoin payments can be made without personal information tied to the transaction. This off offers strong protection against identity theft. It's true, you know, I've bought um, products online before using my, my Visa debit card and then I've experienced that um, either later on after a few days or maybe after a week or a month, um, that same merchant has deducted my card. Now, I've only done business with them once and, and expected a one-off uh, and, and I only expected to pay them once, but yet the, the manufacturer has been able to reissue my card. Um, that doesn't necessarily happen with Bitcoin as well. And I think another final point which um, adds value to Bitcoin is that, you know, we do have a relative degree of transparency and neutral, neutral, uh, uh, <laughs> neutrality. Um, all information concerning Bitcoin money um, supply itself is already available on the blockchain for anybody to verify and use in real time. You know, no individual or organization can control or manipulate the Bitcoin protocol because it's cryptographically secure. This allows the core of Bitcoin to be trusted for being completely neutral, transparent and predictable. Now, the Bitcoin network can already process a much higher amount of transactions um, than it does today. It is, however, not entirely ready um, to scale to the levels of major credit card companies. Um, work is underway to lift current limitations and future requirements are well known. Since inception, um, every aspect of the Bitcoin network has been in a continuous process of maturation, optimization and specialization. And it should be expected to remain that way for some years to come. Um, so another thing I wanted to cover with you, um, as you know, the third caveat of this presentation is the vision. You know, when we look at vision, what is in store? And as I pointed out to you, I think Satoshi Nakamoto, you know, his vision really was for Bitcoin to be used as another payment alternative. I think his, his intention was probably to create another form of peer-to-peer -peer money. Um, I'm sure many of you heard that in the, in the first block ever created of Bitcoin in the blockchain, um, it states that, you know, the Bank of England um, have bailed out the banks again. Obviously, he's viewed this as a disaster because, you know, bank bailouts are funded by taxpayers. So our money is used to fund the bank. And also, you know, that's just on one level. With the addition of quantitative easing as well, you're able to uh, create this. You're able to expand the supply of money. Therefore, that increases the cost of goods. And if the cost of wages don't go up with the cost of goods, then you have the same amount of money, but everything becomes more expensive. 
Bitcoin has been designed for it to be um, anti-inflationary. There's only a set supply, 21 million coins, and there'll be none after. So in Satoshi Nakamoto's mind, maybe he was thinking that him, she, or, or they were th thinking that that would be a way to sort of eliminate some of the problems that we have with the current um, monetary system. But um, some of the points that I wanted to share with you in relation to uh, Bitcoin's vision has been taken from, you know, the Bitcoin Foundation uh, manifesto. Bitcoin will be a globally accepted method of exchanging and storage value, which will operate without the need for third parties. Um, it will provide the right to privacy in transactions that involve no harm to others. The right to keep your savings or spend your money anywhere in the world. The right to economic participation with or without a bank account. The right to economic participation with or without a credit history. The right to convert fiat currency into Bitcoin and vice versa the right to use Bitcoin as a medium of exchange, the right to use Bitcoin as a store of value. And that's actually very good because it looks like the Bitcoin Foundation uh, have set forth in their manifesto that they intend for Bitcoin to be deemed as a store of value as well as a medium of exchange. Um, I'm actually glad that I've stated this because usually when we listen to a lot of media or other um, people's videos, they consistently say that Bitcoin is now determined only as a store of gold. It's only deemed as a store of value. People are using it, you know, to speculate, to keep their cash in there in the hope that it will go up or to be able to use it as a savings account. However, you know, if we reiterate the Bitcoin Foundation manifesto, they see it to be used on two fronts a medium of exchange, you know, to be able to pay for goods and also for it to be used as a store of value, okay? Now, moving on, um, the next caveat of this um, presentation I wanted to cover is the potential. So just to reiterate, you know, quickly we've covered the price history. Um, I've crudely covered the technology um, more recently, just now, um, I covered the vision as brought to as brought forth by the Bitcoin Foundation. And prior to covering the vision, I covered the value. You know, what's the value in Bitcoin? Um, there are just two more points left, and one of them is the potential, and then the last one is my overall sort of conclusion. Um, so, what is the potential for Bitcoin? Now, some see Bitcoin as a store of value of digital gold. Um, however, it's also seen as a medium of exchange. Um, the degree of acceptance. Now, people are still unaware of Bitcoin and every day more businesses accept Bitcoin because they want the advantages of doing so. But the list remains small and still needs to grow in order to benefit from network effects. Um, another potential of Bitcoin is that it has ongoing development. So Bitcoin software is still in beta with many incomplete features in active development. New tools, features and services are being developed to make Bitcoin more secure and accessible to the masses. Some of these are still not ready for everybody. Uh, most Bitcoin businesses are new and still offer no insurance in general. Bitcoin is still in the process of maturing. Um, though there are tougher regulations, there are several ways Bitcoin can go at this point, all of which to legitimate widespread adoption by large institutions. Its journey into fin financial mainstream has already begun, highlighting the necessity of digital currencies. Actually, in the UK, um, HMRC's Treasury a uh, report is encouraging trading financial institutions to solely shift towards digitizing their currency, 
with the introduction of anti-money laundering, consumer protection and technical standardisation for companies in the UK through digital currencies. This will accelerate the integration of blockchain technology with financial services. And um, more recently, you know, um, the Securities and Exchanges Commission has stated that Bitcoin is not a security, which is positive news. Now, just going back to the point about the um, HM Treasury um, actually encouraging UK businesses to shift towards digital currency, my perspective is that we are probably in our lifetimes going to see the digitization of um, currencies perhaps onto a blockchain and um, you know it's always we've always been told especially me growing up having read George Orwell's and things like that was that they're going to get rid of cash they're going to give you a chip and, and you know you're going to have to do your chip with that transactions well, if you've got online banking, um, you'll already, you know, recognize that a lot of your transactions are also digitized. When you're using Visa, you're using a form of digitized, digitized cash or digitized fiat currency. So I think what we're going to have is more digitization. And I think that if we do have digitization of fiat currencies on the blockchain, my perception is that this will be extremely good for Bitcoin and because I think that you know people will realize oh Bitcoin compared to their fiat currency Bitcoin's win and you know they'll be able to more easily switch their fiat currencies for Bitcoin okay so yeah that's that those are one of my thoughts um and also you know, we have things like atomic swaps being introduced as well. And we also have things like the Lightning Network being introduced. So basically, atomic swaps is the ability to have um, a linkage between multiple chains. So perhaps a chain linked between Bitcoin and one of Ethereum. And if I want to swap um, a fair value of Ethereum for Bitcoin, then I'm able to do that without any third parties. I'm just basically able to do that with the technology. Um, I would put in my request. I want fair value Bitcoin for fair value Ethereum. And then if anybody else, um, you know, wants to swap me, then they'll swap it. And then that really should eliminate the need to go through exchanges and go through the fees and um, I, I believe it will make Bitcoin a lot more, um, basically help the liquidity of the overall market. Yes, it will help Bitcoin, but I also believe it will help the entire cryptocurrency market as well. Um, and then apart from atomic swaps, we also have the Lightning Network. Basically, you know, the Lightning Network has been created to be able to make um, faster, cheaper transactions, as well as giving scalability to Bitcoin so that we're able to do a lot more than the current 4 to 14 transactions. It's estimated that Bitcoin handles per second. So all of this is coming. Now, what I'm just going to do is quickly get into my conclusion. You know, um, in the beginning of the presentation, um, it covered that in 2013, Bitcoin was listed at $98. Then um, in November 2013, it increased by 10 times. Uh, Bitcoin crashed and went down to $216, spot 92, um, on the 6th of February 2015. Um, losing 80% of its value and then back to $1,000 on the 3rd of January 2017, um, taking two years to do this. Overall, um, the, market, the market cycle I just described to you took four years and the price crashed twice. You know, this is similar to today's market where Bitcoin reached an all-time high and today, you know, We've lost approximately about 70 to 60 per percent 
of the all-time high value from December 2017. Um, it's clearly evident that Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies are volatile, but at the low perks and high of the market, we are seeing new bottom low price levels and high prices established. Long gone are the days of a $98 Bitcoin along with a $1,000 Bitcoin or even $2,000 Bitcoins. Um, in my research, you know, I've determined the best way to determine um, a new minimum price is to really calculate the average mining cost of a Bitcoin and know that um, anything cheaper than this is really a steal of the price. Um, after speaking to an associate who runs um, an asset management fund, it's coming apparent that many transactions are taking place between individuals, firms and organizations who are purchasing Bitcoin through OTC means. Um, o OTC basically means over the counter and um, it's not done on an exchange, it's sort of private. Usually the type of people that do OTC transactions are perhaps people who have high net worth value, who have lots of cash and people that basically want to acquire large amounts of Bitcoins, probably anywhere from over 100,000 into multiple millions. And usually they are um, happy to pay a premium above the coin market cap listed fee, anywhere from 2% right up to even 10% or, 15, or even 15 or 20%. It really depends on the magnitude of the order Um, that means that, you know, we have people doing OTC transactions, buying um, over the counter. It means that, you know, if 10, tens or a hundreds or even, you know, a thousand or, or even ten thousands of Bitcoins are changing prices without um, an exchange and off the exchanges, um, prices we see are, are skewed. Um, what I'm saying that if we look at, you know, coin market cap, and then if we go over the prices like we did before, we saw that Bitcoin was priced at roughly $6,700. Well, if people are paying, you know, two or three or four or five or 10 or even 20% over the prices that we're seeing on coin market cap, because they are buying large orders, this means that the price that we're seeing on coin market cap is probably actually lower than, than the real price of people paying for it. And then what happens when there's a little bit of an increase because all of these transactions are not going to be done um, through exchanges. However, these people have the ability to sell Bitcoin on the exchange. So they're buying it off the exchange, but then selling it on the exchange, which means that right now the price might have been kept low. There's lots of, in my opinion, there's lots of activity where people are buying, but it's not recorded on the exchange. However, in a bull market, people might be selling less Bitcoin just to make, you know, some of their profit back or for them to take profit, you know, get an extra 20%, 30%. 40% spread or profit off their purchase and then we're going to see the prices really go to an all-time high. So this is something you know that I'm sharing about. Please don't take this as financial advice, this is just my opinion. Um, and also recently you know we've heard of manipulation as well. You know we've heard that um, there is manipulation within the Bitcoin market and recent news articles point to the possibility of December 2017 all-time high um, might have been an outcome of manipulation. You know, I believe that this is truly possible and expect that the SEC and other governing bodies to share the outcomes of, of their investigations soon. Nevertheless, uh, Bitcoin is currently the only truly um, decentralized peer-to-peer -peer money. Uh, its technology compared to the promises of other cryptocurrencies uh, state might sound a little bit primitive, 
but the foundation of a decentralized network is pristine and it really can't be touched in in my opinion to anything else that's out there and i'm purely talking about decentralization you know ripple and ethereum are nowhere near bitcoin's level of decentralization and the independency of separate nodes running its network um also, while still a relatively small amount of merchants accept Bitcoin, it's more than any other cryptocurrency and others that wish to accept uh, and other cryptocurrencies that wish to be accepted, they do have a major significant amount of work to do to be able to catch up at the ubiquity of Bitcoin because Bitcoin is literally everywhere and I just remembered that in Japan it's legal tender and it's accepted throughout their airport and um, also remember you know that Bitcoin is in its beta release and still has a significant amount of functionality that's yet to be implemented such as the lightning network and atomic swaps and even the possibility I'm hearing of smart tracks smart contract functionality being added to the Bitcoin network um, and also because of the total circulating supply um, is at 21 million and um, the scarcity factor is also appealing so you know my opinion is that if you are building a cryptocurrency portfolio you should definitely um, you know, look to have some Bitcoin in your um, in your portfolio. Um, basically, in my portfolio, I think I'm somewhere between you know fifty to sixty percent of my holdings are in Bitcoin, and I'm really glad for it. Um, I really don't look for now to be able to spend any Bitcoin, especially in a downward market. But I'm always looking at ways for me just to add uh, to my position. <laughs> Um, so that's the end of this Bitcoin dissecting series and I hope you've liked the first installment of the dissecting series. If you have found this helpful, please do like it, please do leave a comment um, and please do share it with anybody else um, that you think would benefit from this information. Um, I'm going to be producing more of these um, in line with another offering that I'll be sharing with you guys very soon. But yeah, I enjoyed putting this information together. Um, I think having doing this for more cryptocurrencies will enable me to expand my knowledge and my experience. But more importantly, I wanted to uh, condense all of this dissecting series into one place. So if you come to my channel, you know, you'll see me doing um, a sort of similar balanced evaluation against other cryptocurrencies using the same format using the same entries i'll be covering things like the price history the technology the value um, and the vision you know its potential and then giving you my overall um my overall conclusion so um yep that's really it from me for now um thank you for watching this brother crypt video um, like I said, I hope it's been helpful and take care guys. Speak to you soon.